Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here uh, on this rainy day. Welcome to Sciences Po. Welcome to the School of Management and Innovation. Uh, my name is Olivier Guillet. I'm the Vice Dean of the School of Management and Innovation. And I'll be happy to, um, what I uh, suggest, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a short presentation of about 20, 15, 20 minutes max. And then I'd rather give you the mic so that you, uh, you can ask as many questions as you want in the limited time which we have, which is about an hour, I think, or 15 minutes, something like this. Um, prior to this, we're just going to be watching a video which is going to be starting more or less now. Our mission at the School of Management and Innovation at Sciences Po is to train change makers, economic actors who can deal with the challenges of today and bring about real transformation. Why? First of all, because the world that we live in is experiencing profound changes and perhaps even changes without historical precedent, be it climate change, digital transformation, or even social and political change, it is the field of entrepreneurship which we need to rethink. Secondly, because at Sciences Po School of Management and Innovation, we strongly believe in what we call inclusive prosperity. That is to say, a positive approach to economic development within which businesses consider all their research responsibilities within the context of the public interest. This reflection has led us to define the three main pillars of our curriculum an understanding of the complexity of the world today, creativity as a lever for action and intervention in the world, and the integration of the common interest into business models as a dynamic for inclusive prosperity. Whatever the specialty or the cycle which they choose, we teach our students to tackle the complexity of the world, to develop their curiosity, critical thinking, and their creativity. Entrepreneurial culture, the human side of things, the validity of cultural differences, and the ability to collaborate in a digital world are all at the heart of our educational project. Very concretely, our master's programs cover the foundations of the fields of management through masters in finance and strategy, organizational behavior and human resources, and marketing. But we also offer much more specific programs, such as the marketing masters in new luxury and art de vivre, communication, media and creative industries, innovation and digital transformation, and international management and sustainability. Each of these master's programs has a strong international dimension, which can be seen both through the teaching and the background of instructors and students who take part in the courses. The school equally offers students the opportunity of dual degrees with other partner universities, like l'Université de Saint-Galen in Switzerland, La Bocconi in Italy, the University of Pennsylvania in the United States, and the University of Fudan in China. Our graduates go everywhere finance, marketing, human resource management or consulting, but also all forms of entrepreneurship and digital transformation. Their common denominator is a strong sense of responsibility and an awareness that acting for the common good has become a strategic advantage for companies. Sciences Po. Our mission at the school... I think once is enough, right? But having said that, almost everything has been said, so we could actually end this presentation right now. Or just about. I'm going to give you a, a little bit more uh, detail, uh, though. Could I just ask you how many of you are non-French students, so that I can, I can assume the vast majority of you are non-French students? Okay, just for me to know um, how well you're supposed to, um, uh, to, to know Sciences Po and, and kind of the French context. Okay, good. So welcome again. Um, as it's been explained on, um, during this little video, uh, our School of Management and Innovation was founded three years ago on the contemplation of the actuality of a triple transition, uh, which you can see up there. Uh, a, of course, a social, political, economical transition, uh, an ecological transition, an energetical transition, and a technological transition. And it's not only on the actuality of these transitions, but it's on the idea that these, uh, tr the, the, the issues and the challenges raised by, this by these transitions will not be able to be solved or overcome only uh, in the hands of public uh, uh, authorities and the states, but that the corporate world, companies, and the, the main actors of these companies are going to have to be uh, they're going to have to play a major role in uh, in acting uh, upon these transformations, a role as actual entrepreneurs for change, and contributing to developing new forms of prosperity, which hopefully uh, will be uh, inclusive. And this is this idea of inclusive prosperity, which beyond 
which, is, which, which, which has now become the slogan of our uh, school. It is really one of the core ideas that, uh, one of the horizons that we set uh, ourselves at the School of Management and Innovation for, uh, for ourselves and of course for uh, our students and alumni. We um, base also the, these, uh, the, the, the School of Management and Innovation on three core values, which are exemplified in those three C's, the, the C of complexity, just to remember that we need to train uh, corporate leaders and leaders in general that will not be looking at the world in a simple, sometimes simplified or sometimes simplistic way because they will be uh, posing or, or, or um, uh, understanding reality using very simplified and simplistic tools, but really in a capacity to understand uh, the reality in all uh, the, its complexity and especially in our world today. So of course to ground uh, our um, courses in social sciences is probably a very good way to tackle uh, this, uh, this complexity. The sea of creativity which of course, seems kind of more obvious in programs like communication and marketing, but um, because it, they're, they're kind of in inherent to, to, these, uh, to these topics, but at the same time, creativity is just as important in finance, just as important in, in human resources. So we also wanted to make creativity a core value uh, of, our, of our program. And of course, the seal of common good, which is Sciences Po's DNA, and which had to be the School of Management DNA, but which was uh, really the, the, probably the, the very first motivation uh, for the founders, and we have one founder in this room and the person of the Dean of the School of Management and Innovation, uh, Marie -Laure, Professor Marie-Laure Jelic, uh, who uh, contributed to the creation of the school, who really um, uh, yearned for a school of management and innovation that was very much grounded in, uh, in, in common good and, and inclusive prosperity. So this is for the kind of philosophical uh, background. Uh, of course, another thing that I, I may say, uh, of course, the school was uh, founded on the contemplation of the, actu of the actuality of these transitions, but at the same time, on the, the, the contemplation of the situation in management education in general. And management education in general, up until very recently, was almost exclusively grounded in management science, which seems logical expressed like this uh, and kind of natural. But at the same time, we have been proving at Sciences Po for many years, decades, literally, that we could train uh, corporate leaders in social sciences, of course using uh, management science when, when need be, but, but very, primary, very much primarily training these leaders in, uh, through uh, social sciences. And uh, of course we wanted not to create another uh, business school, because there are already many very good business schools, particularly in this country, but we wanted to create, to create within Sciences Po a place for leaders who wanted to study management and wanted to have a, an impact in, uh, in the corporate world and in society, to do it in a Sciences Po way, which of course would be grounded in, in social sciences. What you don't want to, um, to uh, understand is that you, you don't want to take uh, the School of Management and Innovation for a school for intellectuals. Uh, we very much like uh, students who um, think and want to learn how to think more, but at the same time, the, the, probably what the, the, our strongest point at the School of Management and Innovation is certainly professionalization. All of our masters are uh, very strong on professionalization. They're very much grounded and intricately related to each sector of industry they operate uh, with. So whether it's in marketing or human resources or finance or, or, or international management or whatever else, professionalization is really uh, our first priority. Of course, we do it in a way which is um, grounded in social sciences, which is, of course, in, uh, taking place right here in Sciences Po, so it's going to have to be a little bit different from, from, what is, uh, from the way it is done in, in other universities. But professionalization is something we don't compromise about, and of course, this will be expressed in the um, the employment figures that we'll be uh, providing you with in, uh, in a second. So that uh, leaves us with a pedagogy that's very much uh, transdisciplinary, that's of course um, grounded on social and human sciences. Uh, Sciences Po, as you know, is the third social sciences university in the world, so our permanent faculty here is one of the best you, you, you can have in the, in the field, but also very much on a transdisciplinary approach uh, of management, which is what I was referring to before, thanks to the help of wonderful um, professors who are, for the majority of them, practitioners, 
and actually holding top positions uh, in, in companies in a wide range of sectors. Uh, sometimes they're Sciences Po alumni, sometimes they can be academics on the top of being practitioners or holding PhDs. This is not incompatible uh, at all, but very much uh, grounded in the real uh, professional world. And also very much uh, um, associated to the whatever we, all the things that we do at the Center for Entrepreneurship at Sciences Po, which is independent from the School of Management and Innovation, and which offers um, uh, a genuine a uh, hub for uh, students who want to uh, to undertake um, uh, entre entrepreneurship and, and, and set up their own their own companies, and of course the three C's that I mentioned before is the DNA of the School of Management and Innovation, and uh, through this, the three C's that we're we're trying to articulate social social and human sciences, management science, and this uh, culture for um, entrepreneurship and uh, and innovation. So now what I'm going to do, just briefly uh, show you the, the masters that we have, the School of Management and Innovation. I'm going to be saying a few words about each of them in, in a second, but just for you to, to have a first look at them. All of them are two-year masters at the exception of a one-year program in corporate strategy, which is a program which is... Um, proposed to young professionals in general. Uh, some, stu some profiles would, would, would prefer to do it in the continuation of their studies, but for the vast majority of the students in this uh, one-year program, they will be doing after two or three years work experience. For all the other programs, we're talking about two-year uh, programs who are structured uh, more or less like this, which is a first year, which quite classically uh, will be about uh, providing with uh, fundamental classes. Um, divided into semesters with the possibility to do academic uh, semesters abroad, study abroad experiences, which have nothing to do with the double degrees I will be, uh, I will be telling you about uh, uh, later on. There is the possibility for a gap year, which is more than a possibility actually. Most of the, the, of the students choose to do this gap year. And the second year, which also quite classically will be um, focusing on specialization and professionalization as much as we can. The, the, the second part of the, the, the second year will be dedicated to the internship. So it's, it's a kind of classic a structure, program structure for, for most of our programs. There are specificities I'll be telling you about, about the human resources program, for example, which is done primarily in apprenticeship. A few generalities about um, the school before I get onto the, the program. So it's 10 masters altogether. It's 1,300 students. And it's around 600 professors, and again, the faculty is mixed uh, between um, academic uh, scholars uh, and, and, and practitioners. Of course, we, uh, we, we, we tend to rely a lot on uh, the Sciences Po's faculty, which is, which is very good. As for the practitioners, being Sciences Po is, is, and being in Paris is also quite an advantage for attracting uh, one of the best uh, practitioners in their fields. So now, a few words about um, this first master. Why starting with this master? Because it's the, a master which we created more or less at the same time as the school about three years ago, and which probably expressed very well the, the, the culture and the philosophy of the school as we, uh, we meant it uh, back then and, 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 and still today, of course, which is this transdisciplinary approach to management I was uh, referring to. Uh, building a program which is at the crossroads of social sciences, of um, engineering uh, and design. This originally, the idea behind this program was to train uh, innovation experts and then very quickly we realized that the, 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 the program kind of started to have a life of its own and, and the students certainly had an experience which, were, which went far beyond the mere training to, uh, to innovation, to, to work in innovation department, which, which, uh, which is what some of them end up doing. But uh, it goes far beyond. It's probably one of the most um, intellectually challenging programs w w which we have. Also because we operate with two uh, great uh, partners, uh, Telecom Paris Tech, which is an engineering school for the engineering part, and Strat, which is a design school uh, for, for, for design. But also because uh, on, on what we do here at Sciences Po, we also have a very uh, open and transdisciplinary approach. And uh, our students in this master probably see themselves more as students who are here to think critically about the role of technology and even technique in general in, in society and in the world than just experts in, in innovation which they can end up becoming amongst other uh, uh, career options they, uh, they, they, they will have. So it's really a program for the ones of you who are 
who really want to ground their uh, experience at Sciences Po uh, in a transdisciplinary approach, but it will be true for all our programs, but this program, of course, even more, and have probably a tech kind of uh, uh, view on, on their, uh, uh, their career. So, Corinne, uh, we'll, you'll find all our academic advisors on the 10th floor of this very building, so you just have to climb to a little bit more brave and, and go right up to the 10th floor. Master Communication, Media and Creative Industries, which is one of the biggest masters at Sciences Po, Sciences po uh, in the entire um, institution. This uh, program is very famous in the sector of communication for training uh, generalists of, of, of communication, but in the past years, it was really important for us to, uh, uh, to, um, to, to, to focus on creativity and, and creative content. So it is a program for the ones of you who, of course, are interested to work in communication, maybe without any particular idea of what sector of, uh, or of industry they would like to operate from, but in any case, it would have to be uh, a, a student who has a very strong interest in creativity and uh, in creative content. Maybe because some of you want to work in creative industries, strictly speaking, so creative industries, st strictly speaking, will be, of course, uh, broadcasting, uh, movies, um, video games, uh, animation, or, or, or whatever else. Uh, or just because your, your vision, which is probably a, a good bet strategically, your vision of communication is very much oriented toward, towards uh, the um, creating and creation. One of the main features of, uh, of this program is probably uh, its very good employment rates, which uh, uh, it, it is also true for most of our programs, but this I, I, I pointed out here because you may know that the sector of communication is not one of the easiest as far as employment is concerned. It's quite a competitive sector. So to really be able to, um, uh, to say that 91% of our students find a job in the first six months is, is quite a remarkable performance in this particular sector of industry. And this program is also uh, offered in both French and English, which was not the case, I'm sorry, I did not mention it for the program before. Innovation and Digital Transformation is, is for now uh, offered in, in French uh, exclusively. The Master Marketing and Society, this is also a program that's offered in French for now, even if it does include uh, some classes which are taught in English. It's a general marketing program uh, for the ones who want to be trained at marketing in a very kind of general, uh, uh, strong, holistic uh, perspective. But of course, uh, as it is uh, done here in Sciences Po, we do not want to be looking at marketing just as a tool, but we want to understand uh, the underlying sociological and, and the societal implications uh, behind marketing. So that's why it's marketing is society, uh, because it's important not just for the efficiency of the future marketers, but also for the, uh, the relevance of the impact they will be making in society to understand the society uh, in, 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 in which they are and, uh, and on, on which they will be uh, using some of the marketing tools. And also in the field of marketing, we have this new program which we, which we launched in September and which uh, is already uh, a big success. Uh, Master Marketing, a new luxury and art of evil, which is uh, about uh, specializing in the field of luxury uh, quite obviously, but taking into consideration the new trends in the field of, of marketing as they are uh, exemplified by m almost all the main uh, consortia in, uh, in, in, the, in the sector right now, um, the big groups of in, in, the, in the field of luxury with which we are uh, working in close partnership in the development and, and in the creation of this, uh, of this program. And Aldeville also so because we wanted to emphasize the fact that to have a deep and strategic vision of, uh, of uh, luxury, you have to ground it in culture and, uh, and of course, to, to study the impact of culture and history and sociology on the development of, uh, of the luxury industry throughout the, the, the centuries. Uh, is, is of course a plus for our students, uh, and of course it's very, uh, it makes sense and it's legitimate to do it here at Sciences Po and in Paris uh, particularly. Finance et Stratégie, which is also one of the biggest programs uh, within Sciences Po, one of the oldest two. Uh, this is for the ones of you who are the French uh, among you who have maybe fathers or grandmothers who have done the eco fee um, stream in the old Sciences Po. This is the descendant of 
uh, Ecofi, which has been, of course, uh, redesigned and which has evolved very much uh, through, uh, through time. This Master of Finance strategy is stored in French for now, but it also has classes uh, in, uh, in English and will be uh, offered fully in English within the next couple of years, for absolutely sure. It has two uh, mentions or options, if you prefer, the finance option and the strategy option. The finance option in Sciences Po historically uh, it will take you more towards investment finance and banking. And the strategy option will take you more towards corporate finance and uh, consulting. But of course, this, this is not really closed uh, walls between, uh, between the two. Uh, the, the, the students who uh, d choose this program are usually able to, to evolve in a wide range of, uh, of careers, but the majority of them will still be uh, hired by the main actors of the, 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 these two respective industries if we want to dissociate them, finance and, uh, and strategy, as it's a very visible master in the market and probably one of the most attractive uh, masters as far as the employers are concerned to recruit um, uh, the, the best students. Master Joint Droit Finance is also a French thing. Um, so you definitely have to be French speaking for the uh, simple reason that we, uh, it's a joint program, it's not a joint between finance and, 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 and law uh, only. It's a joint program between the Law School of Sciences Po and the School of Management and Innovation. My advice regarding this program, it's a three year master, so it's, it's, it's quite a challenging uh, program. My recommendation for this program would be uh, to advise it to the ones of you who really um, have law as their main uh, career objective, uh, even if, of course, it's 50% 50, 50 uh, law and 50% finance. As far as law is concerned, they will have to do the entire master in uh, economic law at the law school and the entire master finance et stratégie, mention finance, with us at the School of Management and Innovation. But um, I, I think that the, the kind of personal thinking you, 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 um, you have to do about this program should, should start from, from the point of view of law and legal careers, I believe, as it is where it is probably the most uh, challenging to do this in, in, uh, in less than three years is actually quite, uh, quite a challenge. Uh, and also, uh, it of course gives you the opportunity to become a, uh, uh, a lawyer and uh, to, uh, to pass the barreau, as we say in French. Corporate strategy is this one-year program I was uh, telling you before. So it's a one-year program in corporate strategy, which uh, is a very uh, general uh, topic, but it's very intensive. It's quite dense in one year to do everything. There is no uh, particular space for internship at this stage. So it's really for students who probably have, especially international students, had two or three years experience, maybe more. Sometimes more, actually. We have, we've had students in this program who've been over 35, and no, no, no problem, but want to kind of accelerate uh, their career. Uh, of course, by acquiring the brand Science Boy, if I may say, but not just. It's actually, as far as content is concerned, it's actually quite challenging, uh, and it, it includes a very, uh, a very high and hot content in finance and, uh, and, and strategic management. International management and sustainability, it's one of our old and new programs. Why old and new? Because for uh, quite a few years it was called Economics and Business, and we renamed it uh, last year, actually. Uh, originally this program was a, a, an option within finance and strategy, but because it was taught in English, and it was back then it was uh, uh, hosted at the uh, Department of Economics, uh, it became quite successful. Uh, at least successful enough for it to become an independent program, which, which is what it is now, and especially attractive to international students because it is fully taught in English, uh, and also because it's, uh, it's probably one of our most general programs, even if it's still very much grounded in finance and economics. Uh, now it is probably more open to management in general, and it was very important for us to ground it in, in, in sustainability uh, and, and, and to make it uh, our flagship for international development. Uh, international management is uh, something that that probably was more visible and more identifiable for our top um, academic partners I'll be telling you about in a minute. Uh, and also to express that sustainability is what this school is also very much uh, about. So it's also, of course, a, a two-year program. Then the, uh, the, the students will be choosing careers in a, probably a wider range of fields because it's our most general program. So, of course, you will find careers in, uh, in finance and consulting, but also in strategy, but also in CSR for some of our students in social innovation and, and, and much more. 
Organisation Management des Ressources Humaines, this is uh, a French-speaking programme which is very well known in France in, uh, in the field of, uh, of HR. Uh, very um, identified, uh, clearly identified by the, the, the HR ecosystem. Uh, the, um, the main specificity of this programme is that it is known for its capacity to train strategic HR professionals and not just operational HR professionals. And also, one of the best uh, HR programs as far as uh, transformation and, and, and the transformation of organizations is concerned. Um, so this is uh, done through a very interactive uh, pedagogy. Uh, of course, that takes place in Sonspo, but also with the, some of our key partners, especially in this uh, HR uh, ecosystem and it's a small cohort and it's also a program that is done uh, mandatorily in, uh, in apprenticeship in the second year so all the students in the second year of this program will be studying in, in apprenticeship. Now just a few words about our double degree uh, programs. So you don't want to mistake double degree programs for study uh, abroad options, okay? We have many uh, study abroad uh, options at Sciences Po. We have over, we we'll probably have something like 300. I don't know, maybe you've been told, uh, you've been given this information before today about our international department. Stud study abroad is just about uh, spending three to six months in a partner university as part of your, um, of a master that you would have already chosen. Um, double degree programs are programs that you choose to apply to uh, from the beginning. So it's very important uh, for us to choose uh, university partners that are not only some of the best in the world, but are also very much um, in accord with our, the philosophy that I have presented to you about inclusive prosperity. So it is true for all of them, but it's probably more true for the, for the more recent of these partners, which we chose very much more on, the, on, the, on this basis, uh, whether it's the Stockholm School of Economics or whether it's every new partnership we're working on with the University of St. Gallen. Uh, for the ones of you who may not know, the University of St. Gallen has been number one in the world for, I think, seven or eight consecutive years in a row in, uh, with their master programs in strategic international management. So it's really some of the best universities in the world. We try to cover a wide range of continents, but it's very important for us to have some of the, the leaders and also to make sense uh, as far as the complementarity with our programs is concerned. For example, the uh, media and communications uh, food and double degree, we do with our uh, communication, media and cre creative industries program. And th their program in China is uh, their, um, the program of the School of Journalism. But journalism, uh, from a Chinese perspective, uh, is not as clearly separate uh, to um, uh, the communication as, as we do in France. Uh, as for the other uh, partnerships, they're uh, all of, um, based on our international management and sustainability program I was, uh, I was telling, you just, uh, telling you about just before. Of course, a few words about how we work on professionalization of the School of Management and Innovation throughout the course. So, so there, there are many events uh, every, every week for absolutely sure, sometimes uh, several times uh, a week, whether it's roundtable conferences, whether it's uh, all sorts of business meeting, company visits, speed networking, interactive workshops, gaming. So it's very important for us to, um, uh, to provide uh, such opportunities to our students, but also to do it uh, with a non-dogmatic approach. When I say non-dogmatic, I'm, I'm meaning that we're, we're not just doing with the very, very, very best or most prestigious bank or, 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 uh, or consulting firm, uh, which we would be kind of naturally associated to. Uh, but oh, because of, of, of course, a lot of our students will go for these very prestigious banks or, or, or uh, consulting firms. Uh, but also, some, some other of our students will be will be uh, willing to orientate themselves very differently and will be seeking out totally different careers. So it's very important for us to provide these, uh, the, 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 this career offer in a wide uh, and open perspective to also to help our students to build their professional projects which may change throughout the course and which are not always very, very determined or, or totally fixed. Uh, again, uh, professionalization is, uh, is one of our strong points, as I was saying at the beginning. Uh, what you have to bear in mind is almost um, half of our students have found a job before graduation and almost everyone has found a job uh, within, uh, within six months, which, uh, uh, of course, we're very proud of these figures because at the end it's what, it's, what, it's what matters most, one of the things that matters most. Uh, and this, of course, we owe to the efforts that are made by our academic advisors to be very, very dynamic uh, and in contact with, uh, we each, with each sector of industry, but also by the quality of the projects developed by, by our students that, and, and, and also the, the evolution of these projects 
project throughout their course at the School of Management and Innovation to, to, to be sure that they will be, uh, they, it will be in the capacity to find a relevant and an inter interesting job um, at the end. Just a few uh, of our partners, so this, is not, this list is not exhaustive, so if in this room there are uh, um, uh, people or parents who work for some of these partners and don't see the logo, please don't blame me. So the, this is not an, ex an exhaustive list, it's just uh, uh, some of our key strategic partners at the School of Management and Innovation. When I say partners, I'm not referring only to uh, companies uh, for which our students work or, or in which uh, our students do internships, but uh, companies that are actively participating to the life of the School of Management and Innovation and its development and its projects. So finally, uh, and maybe to give you the mic to ask your questions, um, what kind, this is one question that you may be asking yourself, what kind of profiles of students are you looking for at the School of Management and Innovation? I'm not sure I actually like this uh, word of a profile. Uh, I'm not sure there is such thing as a profile of the students of the School of Management and Innovation, but for sure uh, that, that someone who'd be uh, applying at the School of Management and Innovation would be uh, someone who'd be equally uh, valuing thinking and doing. Uh, for many years, management uh, schools and, and, uh, and business has been very much associated to action, and which is, of course, very good, but action without uh, acting, without thinking, can be at best uh, hazardous and at worst dangerous. And, and, of course, thinking without doing is probably for some people interesting, but it's quite sterile. So we are look, really looking for thinkers and doers, and this is probably the, the number one quality that I would have in, in mind for our students, as well as, of course, uh, a curiosity that would be as, as uh, holistic as possible and that, uh, that encompass, um, of course, a commitment to, to, uh, to responsibility because this is in, in, in our DNA, uh, but, but also a strong interest in the, in the field of the digital innovation is, is, is also a, a plus. But a, a genuine intellectual curiosity and a genuine willingness to make uh, an impact. Uh, globally. So this is what I, I could say in the 15-20 minutes that I, I'm, allowed, I'm given. So if you have any questions now, one of our students is going to come to you with the mic and feel free to ask any questions. I'll stay right here. Thank you for your attention. Hi, thank you for your presentation. I had a question. What's the percentage of students coming directly from the Bachelor of Sciences Po and external students? It actually depends very much on the master we're talking about. Uh, on the, for example, on the Finance and Strategy program, it would be about 80% of the students coming from the Bachelor of Sciences Po. On uh, the international management and sustainability, you'll have, uh, you would have a majority of external students and, and students coming from international uh, uh, recruitment. So it depends. Each master will have more or less its own reality. And some, on some other programs, it's more balanced. It's kind of 50-50 basis. Uh, which master were you particularly interested about? New Luxury and Art of Eve. New Luxury and Art of Eve is a good example. New Luxury and Art of Eve is much more international than it is internal. Uh, good afternoon, my name is LaDonna, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I'm interested in the Communications Creative Industries Masters, mm -hmm. and um, my interest is in media production and video production. Are there, is there anything, any comment you can give about those who pursue media uh, commercials and video productions sure. for that program? Yeah. What you have to bear in mind about this Master in Communication Media and Creative Industries is that it is for people who want to, first and foremost, work in, 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 in communication, contribute to, to create content, but are not necessarily artists or, or I would say, experts or technicians of, of communication themselves. They can be. It's very interesting for us uh, to recruit students coming from a very wide range of fields in this particular master. This is a question I often ask, do, do, do you, um, often have, sorry, do you, um, 
do you need to have a bachelor's in communication or something like this, or a background in communication prior to doing this master? The answer is not particularly, and we would actually prefer recruiting students with more specific uh, backgrounds or artistic or uh, technical backgrounds. So this is certainly a plus uh, for you uh, as an expert in, uh, already an expert in, uh, in, in, in the industry. As far as the students who do um, uh, work in the field of video uh, in, in, in this master, um, we, it, it goes, of course, there is video, strictly speaking, but it, it goes m much beyond. We have many students who are actually working in movies and becoming movie makers, or sometimes um, if, it's, if it's just short films or, uh, or, or, or video in advertising, more, 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 more particularly. Um, so as far as video, strictly speaking, the only thing you have to remember is that this is not a master for the ones who, be, who want to become experts at putting videos together, but rather people who experts at um, working on the communications in the field of creating uh, uh, industries related to video, for example, but it could also be related to, uh, to other creative industries, whether it's music, we have many, many students interested in music, uh, whether it's arts also. Other questions? Um, hi, good afternoon. My name is Hannah and I'm from Germany. And I would like to know what kind of academic background you're looking for in students um, for the Master in Luxury Marketing. Okay. My, my answer would be a little bit similar to the one I've done before about communication, media, and creative industries. And to be honest, it's, uh, it's something that is true for all of our masters, not just at the School of Management and Innovation, but at Sciences Po. The, the, the philosophy behind the recruitment uh, be, be, between admissions in all masters at Sciences Po is that we uh, do not um, require a consistent uh, first bachelor. And it's true for us, it's true for the law school. You can go to the law school without having done a, a bachelor's in law, for example, okay? So it's even more true for something like uh, New Luxury and Art of Eve. We, of course, what we would be looking at is some tangible evidence of either an experience or a strong interest in the field of luxury. Uh, which, of course, is paramount for this program. But as far as your training is concerned, uh, we consider that you could be an excellent student and potentially an excellent professional by having studying engineering or philosophy or psychology or management or history or whatever else, as long as you can provide us with some concrete elements about your, uh, your interest and your project uh, 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 in working in, in the field of luxury. And if you can do that, you're fine. So there are no prerequisites as far as no disciplinary prerequisites for applying to this program and any, any, any other program, by all means. Hi, my name is Bobby. I'm from the United States. Um, I was just wondering how many international students um, do programs in French? How many? International students we have in programs in French? Yes. Ooh, that's a tricky question. Um, I would say probably, probably below 15%. Um, just for you to know, for all our fully taught for, um, in French programs, you would have a C1 equivalent in French. Uh, but with a C1, you're fine uh, in, in, in all our programs. Um, but the C1, of course, it could be a B2 plus for, for, for finance strategy, I guess, because it would be more kind of quantitative oriented. And it could be, a, and it should be a C1 plus for communication, media, and creative industries, because it would be more about, as if, you, if, you, if you decide to go for the French speaking program, but, but this is not a very good example, because you could choose to go for, for the English speaking program in, in this particular case. But um, C1 is probably the safest way to go on our French speaking programs. Okay, thank you. There was a question here and here. Um, hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm from Geneva. Um, I'm interested in the um, media, communication, and career uh, creative industries program. And um, 
I happen to both speak French and English, and um, right now I'm thinking of applying for the English program uh, because of the international orientation rather than the French orientation. Um, but I don't know if that's a strategic move per se. You know, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say something that is quite personal, but, it, but it's true for, um, for, 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 for many situations uh, as far as you're thinking about what, how to apprehend a program or whatever. Uh, as far as um, education is concerned and choosing a program is concerned, I, very often strat strategy is not always reliable. What I'm saying is that you don't really know how it's gonna turn out anyway. Uh, so m a safer uh, approach would probably be to say, how do I want to do this program? Where, what is the nature of my desire about doing this program? Do I want to uh, evolve in a French-speaking context because it'd be, I don't know, more enjoyable in some way or more challenging because maybe your French is not as good as your English or maybe it's the other way around. And, but, but either way, uh, going for what excites you and motivates you and... Uh, um, what is really what you desire is a much safer option than really to try to elaborate strategy based on if I choose this program, it's a bit more international than if I do this. Is this program more complementary than this other program? With, or is it complementary with what I've done in the bachelor's? Uh, what, should I go for something more complementary? No. What, do, what is it that you want to do full stop? And, and what is it that you want to, to, to study? Uh, here at, uh, at Sciences Po. And um, I'm sure that if you, um, you you take a few minutes looking at it this way, you will, you will probably find the, the solution. Will you find it more enjoyable to, to study in English because for whatever personal reason you have, or you find it more enjoyable and more challenging to do it in French? I don't know. B both, the, the, the ones doing it in French don't have less international options than the ones doing it in English. It's just a language thing. Uh, we tend to orientate our uh, French-speaking students to the French-speaking program. Uh, just to save spaces for international students in our English programs, it's a very practical reason, you see. But but as far as orientation is concerned, I'm not sure that there is much uh, difference. So it's it has to be something personal. All right, thank you. No problem. Or maybe, or yeah, I'll take this question because she's close, and I'll probably I can probably hear her, and then you give the mic to the lady. No, he wants he wants to give you the mic, so you'll get the mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's coming. Hi, my name is Mikol, and Hello. I'm from Italy. I'm interested in the Master of New Luxury, and I was wondering how um, we have to choose the five courses, when, and how does this influence our future? There are like five courses we have to choose from the ten inside of the Master, right? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 again, it's n it, 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 this is not going to influence your future so much. It's just you choosing options within with, within the program, and and this you will have to do um, soon enough in the first semester, obviously. But this you you you, you don't have to have. A, you, you can have your preconceived ideas if you want to, but you can also. This should be done with the help of our academic advisor, uh, kind of. Uh, when you're in the program, and it's not necessarily you should, something you should worry about too much prior to joining the program, but rather something you should be working on and try to, to find out once you're in the program with your academic advisor. One question. I'm being told that we can take just one question, maybe two, because the person telling me off is actually very nice, so I'm sure I can get one more question if we really need to. Um, hello, I'm Toscan, I'm French, and I want to apply to the Master in Management and Sustainability. But I've seen in a video that there is an incubator, so I wanted to know a little bit more about it, like if it's something internal to the Masters or external, and how it works, like if I can create something with people outside the sure. Sciences Po in general. Sure. No. I've just realized that I should have had a slide about the, the incubator and uh, the Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, I had it in my French uh, presentation this morning. I don't have it here. So let me tell you, we have a Center for Entrepreneurship here at Sciences Po, which is independent from the School of Management and Innovation and which is uh, some, uh, a service that's offered to all students of Sciences Po, regardless of the programs they, they are uh, studying in. 
Uh, this Center for Entrepreneurship provides, um, of course, an incubator and, and uh, services for students willing to, uh, to develop their, uh, their, their company and set up their own business. But they also uh, offer classes uh, in, uh, re of course, related to entrepreneurship, a wide range of classes which you can choose. So it's, it's a, a kind of independent academic unit, if you want, okay? Uh, which is really there for you to help you not only uh, finalize, but also build your, uh, your, your, your project, and this is a service you're totally entitled to, regardless of the program you're in at Sciences Po. So you should totally, of course, certainly use it. Okay. There, you, 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 you can find their, their contacts in, uh, in the website, and uh, they're in a different building at Sciences Po. You can, uh, you can go and visit them, no, not any time, because they would not be happy if I, if I, to know if I, that I said that. But you can certainly contact them and, uh, and, uh, and ask for a, a meeting of, uh, or an appointment with them to, uh, to ask more about you, to tell more about your project and ask for advice. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. This is the last question we're taking right at the front. If you want to say it to me, because I'll probably hear it, and then I'll, I'll say it again out loud. Uh, so my question was about the Roma Bulgaria. There have been several different classes this year, so I'm just going to ask the What you can you, you mean the double degrees? Yeah, the double degrees. The, the, the double degrees. No, the double degrees there, uh, each double degree is done with a specific master's. Okay, so, uh, the, where, where are they? So, no, you're right. Um, so, uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, so, the food and double degree is done with the Master of Communication, Media, and Creative Industries. As for all the others, they are done with our master's international management and sustainability. Okay? Which is why logical, because there are, are there, there are two main uh, fully taught in English programs. Okay, I think we're done. Uh, thanks very much for your attention. Uh, if you want to have more information about Sciences Po, you also have English-speaking academic advisors on the top floor right here in this building. Thank you very much. Have a good day.